Welcome to your boosted meditation. As we reflect on the current state of the world, there's no denying this extraordinary time we're living in. Although the year is now 2021, no matter how much we'd like to leave 2020 in the dust, there's no unlearning, no unseeing, no undoing the bombshells that made up the infamous year. There's a wonderful quote from artist Yumi Sakugawa. It goes, while the outside world rushes to move on, the experience of the pandemic has yet to fully leave my body. Parts of my body, my mind, my spirit are still trapped in the limbo of pandemic despair, pandemic depression, pandemic numbness, pandemic survival. The world is ramping back up, and maybe you're not so comfortable with the pace things are moving. Or perhaps you've been eager to get back out, and now it's finally happening. But something's off, and it could be you, or it could be them, or it could be everything. A lot of crazy shit went down in 2020, but this meditation isn't meant to be a recap. This meditation is built for the present. To truly dedicate just a few minutes to help you take the world you've always known and reconcile it with life after 2020. As your city takes flight once again, for your own well-being, let's take the time to get your wings back. Let's light this candle. Let's begin properly with a comfortable position. Great if, right now, you find yourself indoors, resting on a couch, a chair, or a bed. Perhaps all you need is a pillow on the ground to find your comfort zone. Take refuge in your quiet space. Enjoy this moment you've created for yourself. Block all distractions. For the remainder of this meditation, your focus is on you. The same way you're tempted to look at your phone, use this time to take interest in yourself. Now, if you haven't already done so, close your eyes. Listen to the background music. Give yourself to the melody. Now, more than ever, it's important for us to calibrate ourselves to flow with, rather than against, the movement of the world. In his book, Good Vibes, Good Life, author Vex King writes, with every breath, there's transformation occurring within us. We die and are reborn with every breath we take. Now let's encourage positive transformation by inhaling for five seconds and then exhaling for five seconds. Ready. Five seconds, inhale. One, two, three, four, five. Five seconds, exhale. One, two, three, four, five. Once more, five seconds, inhale. One, two, three, four, five, five seconds, exhale, one, two, three, four, five. And with that, you are reborn. For the rest of the time, remind yourself to keep breathing slowly, but above all else, at a pace that's comfortable for you. The words 2020 have taken on a whole new meaning. No longer just a term to describe perfect vision. But as we continue to normalize the dumpster fire that was 2020, we also run the risk of forgetting about how shocking it all actually was. We saw people fight to death over toilet paper. 
on the news, stories of tragedy and division ran all day, every day. Bad news on top of bad news. By mid-year 2020, we had become completely desensitized to all that was happening. And now, without addressing the mess that was created, we're supposed to go back to normal, knowing what we know now about CNN versus Fox News, the police versus the black community, about Asian hate, about cancel culture, about the lengths we're willing to go for TP. Unlike 9-11, where the country emanated patriotism, with 2020, the kumbaya vibes didn't last long at all. The entire country quickly became split on just about every major topic, including mask wearing, policing, racism, voting fraud, gun control, education, workplace safety, vaccinations, the list goes on. When there's so much disagreement around you, to witness humans versus humans in so many new ways so frequently, it does things to your brain. People are acting out at markets, on airplanes, on the streets. You can't expect yourself to adopt a fend for yourself mentality and then just snap back to how you were before. From vaccination status to ice cream sampling, things that never used to be a problem before can now be a very sensitive point of contention. You may not be the one having a public meltdown, but still, the internal struggle is real. Maybe you have to go back to the office soon and you're dreading the commute, or maybe you're struggling with the decision to send your kids back to in-person school. When trauma isn't properly processed, it doesn't just go away. Without fail, trauma will, 100% of the time, manifest itself. The aftermath is almost always depression, anxiety, feeling alienated from society, and potentially destructive behavior. In fact, the best equipped people during this time are those who've had experience in dealing with mental health issues. They're able to recognize the signs and proceed with caution. They know when they're not in balance and not ready to jump full cannonball style into social waters. They know not to brush it away or run from it. But if you haven't had much experience in dealing with matters of mental health, then you might not even know it's happening, let alone know how to deal with it. And on top of that, it's very unlikely that you've experienced living through a pandemic of this magnitude. The last comparable one happened in 1918. And by the way, people went a bit bonkers coming out of that one too. The events of 2020 challenged all of us in the most personal ways down to our core belief systems. With quarantine, we learned that our mental health is just as important as our physical health. With our days revving back up, let's not put our mental health back on the back burner. Now, more than ever, let's do ourselves a favor and come back out into the world with the proper tools for a smooth transition. The silver lining, ironically, is in the name. The word pandemic comes from the Greek word pandemos, which means all the people. Therefore, take comfort if you're feeling lonely, if you feel like you have no one to talk to. The fact is, in this case, you have everyone to talk to. We all yearned for connection while we were quarantining. We all want the pandemic to end and for it to never happen again. In the most foundational ways, everyone can relate. Even world wars couldn't claim this. The entire world was moving at a furious pace and then slammed on the brakes. Everyone was forced to slow down. The silver lining gets even brighter when you realize how much easier it is now to fulfill your needs, connect with friends and family, 
And if you don't want to talk to someone you know, the options for therapy are more abundant and more affordable than they've ever been. You can get professional support without ever leaving your couch. The world developed a newfound appreciation for good physical and mental health. Let's not let it fade away. Continue to nurture your personal growth. Continue to practice gratitude for the relationships that got you through it all. Hold on that gratitude as we breathe. Five seconds inhale. One, two, three, four, five. Five seconds exhale. One, two, three, four, five. Yumi Sakugawa goes on to say, I will not be pressured to move at the breakneck speed of capitalism that wants to forget everything. I will remind myself as often as I can to move at the pace of my own healing and be attuned to my own slow and tender needs. Move at a pace that feels comfortable for you. And as you gain back your senses, Try to emerge from this meditation slowly. Open your eyes and take in your surroundings. Go ahead and gently shift the setting of your heart from survive to thrive. From raging dumpster fire to stories of human triumph to your story of personal triumph. Looking back, it's all 2020. You've reached the end of your boosted meditation. Congratulations and Godspeed.